this is the, the last one for me. It's just basically, I've heard somebody say, well, do we really need 20 hertz? Is that really the uh, range of human hearing? Just because I do hear a lot of, uh, you know, producers do cut off the bass around 30 hertz, right, Chana? You know, your PA speakers, they're not going down to 20 hertz. Well, they don't need to, right? They don't. Yeah, they're just trying to get loud. But yep. I'm for me, 20 hertz is the, the magic number. I say for somebody, if they're buying a sub, save up your money and buy a sub that can do at least 20 hertz. Otherwise, you're going to have to buy a sub for your sub. You know, <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Just buy the one that gets down to 20 hertz. Now, some people like to go below 20 hertz. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm I'm okay with that too. But maybe for the people who uh, maybe don't understand that yet, what, what would be the reason to go to 20 hertz or sub 20 hertz? Is there, do we need that? Well, we, you know, the, Want it? the common misconception is that 20 hertz is the limit of audibility. It's not true. Um, the the audibility of, of deeper frequencies is, is what we call threshold dependent. Mm -hmm. It's just volume driven. Uh, we become increasingly insensitive to uh, deeper frequencies and our ability to perceive them. You know, we've, we've seen the equal loudness curves, the Fletcher mm -hmm. Watson equal loudness curves. That's what those are. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the loudness control and DEQ and everything like that is based on. Um, but uh, if can we hear 15 hertz or 16 hertz? Yes. If it's loud enough, we can hear it. Uh, but generally, we perceive it more than mm -hmm. we hear it. Yep. Uh, say you're in a you're in a, a a church with a conventional a true pipe organ with 32 foot uh, uh, stops you know the big pipes and and when the organist right leans into that that 32 foot stop and, and that 16 hertz note gets pushed out into the church well what do you what do you perceive it's it's sort of like a pressure or a thickness in the mm -hmm. air rather than an audible note. Wow. You can you can hear 16 hertz if it's loud enough, but generally it's like, wow, I can perceive that yeah. because mm. I can feel this pressure, this thickness, this modulation in the air. Um, and that's what the subwoofer can bring to the presentation. If the sub can get down into the teens, it can render that, that infrasonic foundation, that pressure, that solidity – you know, a good one to try, and, and, and we've done it with our own tunable subs, the uh, Flight of the Phoenix remake with Dennis Quaid. Hmm. The, uh, Flight of the Phoenix. The, 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 yeah, it's because the original one wasn't his, mm -hmm. um, but that's the most popular oh. one. The plane crash scene where they're, where they're flying through the sandstorm, that has a lot of infrasonic buffeting uh, in it. And if you look at the soundtrack – You'll see a bunch of stuff at 13, 15, 17 hertz. Um, and Ooh. if you if you use one of our and you can isolate it, Joe, on your on your software and look at it. Mm -hmm. If you use one of our variable tune subwoofers and say, I'm gonna tune it to standard tuning 20 hertz, and I'm gonna listen to the plane crash scene. Now I'm gonna retune it to extended, which will get you down to 15, even 14 hertz in room. It's a obvious difference in the presentation. Why? You get that. We've all opened the windows in our car and felt that modulation and that buffeting. That's a lot of that's infrasonic. It's the same sensation when you tune the sub to extended mode and replay that whole scene. You can feel that solidity, foundation, and, and buffeting in the room that is much less present in the standard tune. So that's always a good example when I that I bring up and say, you know what, try this flight of the Phoenix crash scene and you'll see what huh. I'm talking about. Yeah, I got to check that one out. Uh, when I used to do more car audio stuff, uh, my friends used to used to say like, "It sounds like we're underwater." Like, you yeah, gonna, sure. Yeah, like underwater sound versus the if you you're not hitting those low notes, you're not so really even that even if you can't hear it, you can perceive it, and it mm -hmm. and it does lend itself to influencing your your subjective perception of that passage. Well, definitely the other stuff in the room interacts a little bit differently when you have that type of extension you may not audibly hear it but there's definitely some stuff happening in the room a lot of times oh yeah oh yeah, Get some stuff yeah. Down. Like, oh, I, man. I know I, I can i can hear 16 hertz in my living room that's when the um the wine glasses are shaking in the kitchen sure yeah start right? stuff starts what my son and i were watching a show once 
and and at the end of the scene the the mixing engineers mixed in some it was infrasonic it was very deep and it wasn't super loud but it was loud enough uh and as the scene ended they th- kind of mixed it in just for some maybe some menace and some tension the whole couch started going like this and we <laughs> couldn't hear anything <laughs> i looked over at him i said did you feel that and he said yeah and i said back that up i want to play it again <laughs> and, and we played the scene again it had to be somewhere around 15 hertz and and the whole couch was moving up and down like this and the room was shuddering but i couldn't hear a thing mm-hmm. that it was it was just a cool moment cool subwoofer moment it's like wow impersonics matter uh even if you can't hear them you can sure perceive them add that to our easter egg chana so <laughs> and then the 200 to 250 hertz we're going to so, say something have some infra you know make the beat infrasonic <laughs> make the beat infrasonic you know what i mean right they can't they hear, hear the kick hear drum the but they can feel yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. make sure to join us every monday for our live stream at 4 p.m pacific 7 p.m eastern at youtube.com forward slash daily i-fi